Thank you for calling Lowell. Please note, calls may be recorded for training and monitoring purposes. Hello, Drew to more at Lowell Financial. Can I start by taking your reference number, please? You can. Sorry, what was your name? Are you speaking to more? More. Good afternoon, Mo. Uh, my name's uh, Russell. Uh, the account number is... Have you got the account details up there? Yep. Okay. And you, you stated that you purchased this account in good faith from Capital One, uh, and you were not aware of any outstanding previous disputes on that account. I did inform... Uh, in fact, I did inform you of those previous disputes on that account. But you said to me at the time... Well, when I spoke to you, is that you were going to send um, to me a copy of the reconstitu reconstituted agreement that you received from Capital One. Um, can you tell me where those are? I'm going to double check this very second. Um, an agreement, you said, or a statement. Well, I don't. I don't want an agreement. Uh, uh, the the agreement. Uh, yeah, I want. I want to. I'm, I'm looking for the lawful paperwork that that that, that, that the would be between you and Capital One surrounding this debt. And we said we will send that out to you. You said you were going to send that out to me. Yes, but I've not received anything. Right, as far as I'm aware, it's not information we actually send out. I'm afraid that I don't know who's advising you would be sending out, but we don't. The, the agreement that we've got with Capital One, so we wouldn't be sending that out. Um, I thought you were requesting the agreement that you had with Capital One. That is something we can't send out, but because the account is closed, we wouldn't really be looking into that anyway. Um, I think what you're requesting is what we've got in place, so our Lowell's agreement with Capital One. So is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm looking, I, I want to know why, you know, on what base. Well, I do know, I, I actually do know why you've cancelled the debt. But I, I, I would like to see the paperwork why you suggest as a company you have cancelled the debt. Because I, I believe something's been hidden from here, me, me Mo, here. Right, um, spare me a second. I'm just going to look over off the previous notes to see what you requested and see um, what's been going on with that. But as far as I'm aware, the, the, the information you're requesting is not something you actually send out as far as I'm aware, but I'm just going to double check. Uh, well, well, you if, shall I put a freedom of information request in? Um, a DSAR, we, so a data subject access request. Yeah, you're more than welcome to do that, sir. No, not a data subject access request. Uh, freedom of information. Any information held regarding me and my account. I, you know, uh, uh, not a data subject access. Um, I want to understand the details that you're holding on me, not whether you can share them or whether I give you a legal right to share them. Um, because, as I say, I've been through to you, and I've been through to the original creditors on both the accounts of the last two accounts that I've had with you, and neither of you can provide me with any lawful paperwork. And I find that a little bit right, so what sinister. What lawful paperwork are you looking for? Pardon? What kind of lawful paperwork are you looking for? Well, I'm either looking for a deed of assignment, not a notice of assignment. I'm looking for either the deed of assignment uh, that suggests that you have a contract with the original creditor, or I'm looking for deed of novation. Um, do you have any of those? We wouldn't be looking to send that information out. So, I mean, the only information we can send to yourself is a copy of agreement that you signed up for with Capital One. Now, um, with you signing up to an agreement with Capital One, sir... You do have that copy? I don't have it in front of me, sir. It is something we can request, but because the account is closed, like I said, I'm not too sure if it is something we can request, um, with it being a closed account, because like I said, what we're going to have to do is go back to Capital what? One and ask for the information. So because the account's closed, I don't think it's something you'd be looking into, sir. But, <laughs> as it states in, in, in the opening line of, of, of your response, uh, before you cancel the debt, you state quite clearly, Mo, we purchased this account in good faith. So why wouldn't you have that original credit? Why wouldn't you have that credit agreement if you purchased that account? Now, let me go on. It from, in good faith and Capital One, were, we were not aware of the outstanding or previous disputes. That's because I disputed this already with Capital One. 
Now, you decided not to get involved because I believe that you don't have the lawful paperwork. Now, I need to see that lawful paperwork, Mo, because I believe that fraud is taking place here. So, so I'm just going to look over the account, so thank you for okay. coming. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, so when you said you pushed the account in good faith, and you couldn't appreciate it, so we pushed the account not knowing there was a dispute in place, Capital One should have made us aware of that. Mm. And because of this, obviously, our best course of action was to close the account. Um, Okay, can I just interject there, Mel? You've just told me that you purchased the account in good faith, but Capital One didn't make you aware of the original dispute that I had with them. Okay, so when you purchased that account, Mel, what, did you not purchase that account under... Did you not think it might be a good idea to ask for the original documentation? I know you don't, but I'm, I'm, I, you know, I work as a chef, and when people ask me questions about what what, what's, yeah. what what ingredients are in, in 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 what I do as a job, I expect to be able to tell them. And now I'm asking oh, you, what ingredients are involved in this transaction between you and Capital uh, One? By all means, sir. Uh, obviously, what, what's involved is obviously when we purchase the account, so the, the best way to think of it is obviously we, we just purchase the account itself. Now, for whatever reason, if a customer wants to request a copy of the statement, the agreement, or anything along the lines, or any sort of dispute they've got with the original client, we're more than obliged to obviously look into that dispute. So if you don't agree with the balance, we're more than happy to go back to Capital One and dispute with them. Like obviously the agreement you had was with Capital One um, no. directly. Um, so if you've got a dispute, we'd go back to them. So in essence, if you requested a copy of the agreement, we'd go back to Capital One and request it from them. And whilst this process is ongoing, so the account will be put on hold, I'll request the information. Once we've got the um, credit agreement from Capital One, so we, they'll send it on to us and then we forward it on to yourself, sir. And that'll obviously, at the end of the day, resolve the, um, uh, the query that you had with the credit agreement. That's the way it works. We don't, we don't get the credit agreement up front, so it's not something we do, I'm afraid. Do you not, do you not, is, do you not find that ridiculous, Mo? Do you not, I mean, do, that, so is that not like me going into a shop and saying, well, you know, send me the receipt later? Yeah. Where's my proof of purchase? I can completely understand where you're coming from, sir. I'm not because we we would only purchase the account if they had a credit agreement. So you're pay, I mean, so you're telling me then then you're purchasing in good faith. Yeah. And what? It's on the letter, sir. Like obviously, we purchased it in good faith. Obviously, think the accounts all. Is that a na is that not a naive business plan? I mean. Do you not think that some people are just now nah, we're going to. Uh, Rip you off? If I mean, how how can you purchase something not knowing whether it's a valid debt or not? Does that not that seems naive to me, Mo? Uh, I completely understand. I mean, like I said, if it, it, it would be a legitimate debt, so like I said, would it be um, a purchase something that isn't? Obviously, like I said, that would potentially be fraud in that case. If you were purchasing something that's not from not an actual debt, but it is a guaranteed actual debt that we purchased. Um, it's not just a made-up figure from a random company sending it out to yourself. Cause it, I'm pretty sure you're so more than aware of the debt. Is that correct, sir? It, so why have you cancelled it then? If 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 if, if it's, uh, you know if it's uh... it's a commercial decision to close the account from our company. The reason for us to close it is that you've obviously established you've obviously had a previous dispute with Capital One. Now with us not being aware of this dispute, sir, um, other than company, it only seems obviously. So, so, so under contract law, then have they not made you fully aware of the contract? Details surrounding this account, and is that not fraud by Capital One? Uh, not you've been, you've been missold something, haven't you? You've been missold something. Capital One has presented to, to you this as a bona fide debt to be collected upon, when actually, in fact, it wasn't because they knew that there was a dispute um, in place. I mean, so when you can't get to this stage in you, so when they're not being paid with Capital One, sir, um, I mean, obviously, it's a lot of. Uh because you don't purchase one account, so it's not going to be your single account, you purchase loads. So you don't expect all the accounts to be obviously valid. Um, there may be some sort you, of... You, you say valid, I say lawful. Well, you can probably your own words into it, so as you could appreciate the, the, the bigger picture is obviously we purchase so many accounts that we can't guarantee all of them to be valid and lawful, lawful. in that sense, if you want to say so. Um, but obviously we do get the odd ones that obviously in your case, like for example, um, where they have been, you know, obviously it shouldn't actually have been sent on to us. Um, we do have to, obviously, it's just something we've got to take on the chin.
chain and just obviously go ahead and obviously close the accounts down, sir. Um, okay. As you could appreciate, um, we can't, if you're putting in thousands of accounts, sir, we can't check each and every one of them. Does that make sense, sir? It, 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 it makes sense in terms of you telling me. It makes absolutely yeah. no sense in terms of business. I mean, it's a strategy, it's just a strategy for fools. Um, if you're telling me that you're purchasing accounts on just good faith alone, that sounds ridiculous. So just to wrap this up then, Mo, um, because I will be sending that Freedom of Information request in there. Um, just to wrap this up, so are you telling me then when a third-party company is involved such as yourselves on this, because you were, were you a third-party on this account or, or did you actually purchase the account? We've actually purchased it. Yeah, we're not. We've not. Uh, we're not collecting on behalf of Capital One. We've actually purchased it where the legal owner of the account. Okay, so when you discover, the, as the legal owner of that account, when you discover that there is previous disputes involved with the original creditors, you're telling me that that is unable to be collected on that account. Uh, it's it's a case by case basis, uh, Russell. I mean, obviously, if it's the case that we can resolve the matter, um, for example, if you believe there was charges or interest added that shouldn't be should have been added? We'd go back to Capital One and say, "This is what our customer thinks. Um, well, what is your comeback to this?" And if Capital One say, "Hold on a minute, we have actually charged the customer a high interest rate or whatever," we'll be looking to obviously remove that interest rate and obviously reduce the amount to get that paid off. But if I don't, I don't exactly know what your dispute was about, but if it's a major dispute, I'll, um, no, I'll, I'll quickly tell. I'll quickly tell you, uh, uh, Mo. Uh, it'll just take me a minute just to tell you so that you can be in the loop and aware. What I believe that, that is going on between the original creditors um, and the DCAs, the debt collection agencies, um, what I believe is going on is when once these debts, when they're with the original creditors, once these debts hit a default period, which is roughly around about three months, right. I believe that the original creditor has insured that asset and it collects upon the insurance. And the reason that you cannot collect on that original paperwork is because the original creditor has collected on the insurance. Now, the insurance company has now in receipt of that documentation. So I believe that's the case here. So I believe that the original creditor has committed fraud um, and has been paid twice for the loan. But yet, he's tried to con you by filtering out the loan. Now, I think you should take exception to that as a company. And I think you should uh, redress the balance with these original credit companies. So that, that's what I believe has happened, Mal. You know? Right. Could you shed any light on that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, what's happened is you've obviously, your insurance company has paid out towards the loan. And obviously, Capital One have sent out the original agreement to the insurance company, is that correct? I believe that that's the case, yes. And you believe, obviously, then Capital One don't have that, an original agreement to hand, is that correct, sir? Yep, and that's why they're using reconstituted agreements. Right. I mean, I mean, you have obviously disputed the account with us, but the only thing I can see you requested is a copy of the statement. Um, no, I didn't. Re I, 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 no, I sent, no, I sent you an original. I sent you and Bolt. I sent you the same dispute as I sent the original creditor. Um, um, I didn't. I, I don't deal with statements. I wanted the full accounting. Um, I don't deal with photocopies either. I want very viable copies of the agreements. You know, as a statement. I mean, yeah. I don't think that's something we would be able to send out anyway. So even if it does come to and requesting a copy of the agreement is actually going to be a copy it's not going to be the actual document if we send that actual document to the customer so what proof have you got to say there was actually a debt there well it, it, it's, it's irrelevant whether you send it to me as a dispute the problem is if we go to court I'm going to request exactly the same information and you know if you haven't got it in court well the problem is I'm going to then levy charges against you um, which isn't going to look right good if you can't turn up with that. In, if you can't turn up with those document documents, I completely understand. I mean, mm, from what I'm understanding mean. from your current disputes, obviously it, that may well be the reason the account was closed. Obviously, they may not have been able to get the, a copy of the agreement. Uh, I can't really comment on that. It just says on the computer, it says commercial decision to close the account. 
but it's, there's nothing to actually state that the original agreement was actually requested. Um, how did you put the dispute forward? So was it via email, via post? Uh, I, via registered post. Via registered post, yeah. right. Um, what about, uh, I stated in that I would pay you. I, I would pay anybody that stands up before me and presents me with this lawful paperwork. That's what I did. Now, you didn't do it, and the, the original creditor didn't do it, and you didn't do it. So you end up in a, having to make a commercial decision. Now, I think we both know that commercial decision is because neither of you have got the original or verifiable copies of what I'm asking for. I think that's a problem here, Mo, isn't it? But, I know you do, Mo. I'm going, to, I'm going to leave it there because I have questioned you enough uh, and I have battered your head a little bit. Uh, Mo, I'm going. To, if you can just put on onto your record there, I'm going to um, um, put in a freedom of information request to see if we can get any further because I need to uncover this not just for me. You no, know, I, I understand you're doing a job, Mo, but you know, you there's going to come a point at some point where we, you know are all going to have to understand what's been taking place within the credit agency. Now, I understand that you work within it, and I, do, I don't believe for one minute that you're double-dealing yourself in any way. Um, but the, the system is, Mo, and I do intend to expose it. Right. But, Mo, you have a great day. Right, so thank you for your calling, and if you have any further questions, then it'll, give, it'll be free to call. Is that okay? That, that, that's fantastic, Mo. Mo, you've been an absolute legend, and I'll speak to you. Uh, much love to you and your family. Take care of yourself. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. So, what's Mo at the Lowell Group? And... See, what we're doing here, guys, is I'm trying to trace the original documentation, which none of them have. This is why they're using these reconstituted agreements. Now, the reconstituted agreement, in most cases, is just not good enough to stand up in law. Um, so, we'll move on. We'll go back now, again, to the original creditor, which is going to be Shop Finance Direct. Now... I have requested this information from them, but I've had nothing. Um, we've got a couple of talks coming up. I want this information in the talks. I have been a bit lazy over the last few months and uh, let things slide a little bit, but let's crack back on with it. Take care, guys. I'll speak to you soon.